Hello Trail Finders, welcome back. Today we are going to write an Apex code on how to find some average and maximum values in a list of integers. So let's get cracking. Let's go to the Salesforce developer console. And here we are going to write, uh, create our class, which we, I have already done. Now I'm going to create a method. Remember the access modifiers. So first thing, when you write a method, you need to give the access modifier. I'm going to use public. Then remember static. So we are going to use static. Why? Because I don't want to create an instance of the class. I just want to call the method straight away. Hence, I'm going to use static. This method is not going to return anything. So I'm going to use void. So void basically means blank. and That's not going to return anything. And then I'm going to give my method a name. Now let's try to make, so far we have been just writing method, but let's try to make this method more explanatory. So let's say what we are trying to do here is we are going to find some average and maximum value in a list. So let's say some average and max in list of integers. For integers, I'm just using int. You can write as you feel like. Then I'm going to create an, a list of integers. So how do you do that? You do it like this integer. I'll call it int list. And then we need to initialize this list. So how do we do that? We do it like this. So basically we have created our list of integer. You can also call it an instance of list of integer. You can call also call it a variable of integer type list. So now we are going to add values to this. So how do we do that? We are going to do it like this. Because it's an integer, we don't need to put it inside quotes and we do it like this. I'll just copy this whole so it makes it easier for me to write. And then we can have three, we can have 10, and let's have five, and then let's have 25, right? Let's have these five values inside our integer. There are better ways of getting values inside your list. We'll come to those, but let's just create the uh, list for now. Now, the next thing is in order to find your sum, average, and maximum, we need to write a loop. We need to traverse all of these values which are inside our list. So, how do we do that? We write a for loop. Now, we are going to write an enhanced for loop. So, what we'll do, we'll do, we'll give the data type. Then we'll do create a variable for our iteration and then we'll give the list name. Then we'll open our uh, block of statement. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to do sum. So for that, we need to have an integer uh, variable where we are going to store the sum value. So how do we do that? So we are going to store the sum value and I'm initializing this variable as zero. Why? Because I want to you know, get a memory allocated in the heap space and I want to give it a zero value so that when I start adding the integers from my list, you know, the sum value comes out correctly. Hence, I'm initializing my variable with zero. Now, what do we do is it's very simple. In order to do sum, you'll just do sum is equal to sum plus i. Now, what will happen? So basically, if I just write here usually you know so for each time you know your for loop will run so your for loop will run for all of these five items so one three ten five and twenty five and how we are going to do sum so when it first value comes up which is one then what will happen in this line 16 what will happen your sum which is currently zero plus one right it will add these two values which will become one and hence your final value of your sum here will become like this right which would be one right this makes sense remember in apex code the variable on the left side gets the value allocated from the right side so whatever is on the right side that's get calculated and it is passed on to the left side of the equal to similarly when the next value comes in which is three so this time your sum value is actually one instead of zero the so first time it was zero second time it is one and then we'll do one plus three so now see 
using system.debug what happens every time in the loop. So let's say sum is equal to this and we'll do uh, put sum here like this and let's see the value of sum and i before the calculation is being done. We will see value before the calculation and after the calculation. So let's say sum before calculation and let's write sum here and then to make it more readable you can put spaces in between and then let's say i is equal to and then we'll put i and here we are just putting sum but we can still say sum after calculation so i'll just put it here and say after calculation let's save it here and see what the output is so how i'm going to run this method i'm just going to put the name of my class and the name of the my method why because uh, this is a static method so i don't need to initialize my variable i can just use class name and dot method name and it should work fine so we'll check this box called open log and then we'll click execute so if you see sum before calculation uh, zero and then i is equal to one and sum after calculation is one the same way i was explaining it to you earlier sum before calculation is one and then it adds three that becomes four then before calculation four and then 10 that becomes 14 and then that's how you go on and at the end result is 44 you get that so i'll just remove that now similarly we are going to find out the average so how do we do the average so again uh, we'll first as we'll create the variable so let's call it average and we'll obviously initialize it with zero because we want the correct value to be calculated now how do we do average so the formula for average is sum divided by number of values so how do we do that so we are getting the sum already now we need to do is this number of values how many values are there so we just need to have a counter and count how many values are there so we'll create another variable and we'll call it count and this is zero right now and then what we'll do is count in here uh, so there are two ways you can do count is equal to count plus one that is one way but we are going to use the enhanced version remember it was in one of the very first videos i recorded in this series add a tag for that particular video here but basically you can do count plus plus this is the increment operator and this would increase the value of count by one so that is our count variable so if we want to now calculate our average so we'll do it like this so system.dvrg will say average is equal to and then we'll say divide sum by count right and that's going to give us our average let's run it one more time and see what the output is so we'll do debug only and average is equal to eight so if we divide 44 by 5 that roughly leave a remainder but because we are using integer value apex code has automatically rounded it off for us if you're going to use decimal then the average would be eight point something rather than just straight away eight so we have found these two values already now we need to find the maximum value in the list so how do we do that so again we need a variable to store the max value right and again we are going to put it as zero for now and then we are going to use our if logic inside our loop because we need to check the maximum value in all of the values which are there in the list right so how do we do that so we'll do if max value is less than i then what do you do you put max is equal to i how did i come up with this logic so you know i'll just explain it to you so basically if we go with the same idea in your loop what values will come in so first it will it will come one then it will come as three then it will come as 10 then five and then 25 these are our five values now your loop is running for the first time the max value we have given right now is zero that we have initialized here so our max contains zero and the loop is running for the first time so what will happen think about it so max currently what the value inside max is it's zero and what the value inside i it is one so is zero less than one yes it is so what it will do it will go inside this if statement and it it is going to change the value of max and put one inside it similarly when the second time loop runs the value is 10 value is 3 so what will happen 
the max value right now is one and i value right now is three so again it will go inside this if loop and it will put the value three inside max next time it comes 10 again it will go inside the if loop and this time it will put 10 inside max now when it comes for the fourth time the i value is 5 and max value is 10 but now do you see 10 less than 5 no so then it will not go inside this if condition and the max value will still stay 10 and then when it comes for the last time it will be 25 and then your max value would be 25 so let's put a system.debug here and say max is equal to and we are going to do max here and then also uh, let's put a inside this if let's see what is basically happening so explanation that i gave you does that happen so let's see max is equal to let's call it inside loop so that we understand where this debug is coming from max and then let's call it i is equal to i i'll save it and i'll do the execute again let's see what our output is okay okay we are getting the sum debugs as well i'll just remove this uh, debug for sum so that our log becomes a little clearer so that i can explain you what is happening for the max uh, logic I'm just commenting out the debug so our sum would still be there so don't worry about that so basically inside the loop max value is one and i value is also one for the first time why because it has already changed because we have put in the value here already what happened second time before and after so that would have made more sense to you let me do it inside loop before right loop Okay, before uh, max is zero, i is one, and after max is one, i is one. Before max is one and i is three, so this is the second time the loop ran, and then after, uh, because it is less than one is less than three, max becomes three. Then third time, uh, max is three, i is ten, and then max becomes ten, obviously because three is less than ten. Fourth time. It, do, it doesn't go inside the loop and hence we don't see that debug statement coming through because I've put in those statements inside if and hence it doesn't show up right and the f then it comes the fifth time and then you see that value coming through and hence our max is 25. I hope this would have brought some clarity in your thoughts as to how you write this logic. Please go in your developer console. Do not look at my solution. Try to build this solution yourself and I'm going to put some more exercises in the description section. Please do those exercises yourself. You would feel more confident about writing Apex code. Wishing you all the best in your Salesforce journey. Have a good day.